Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. Today's an exciting day because I'm going to rescape the XXL no filter vase. I have a pretty cool idea for it, so let's get started. So here's the current situation of the vase. As you can see, it doesn't look the best anymore. I started thinking about doing a rescape about a month ago. And once the idea of a rescape is planted in your head, it's very difficult to find the motivation to keep on top of maintenance. So I've still been doing water changes, I've still been feeding the fish, but I just couldn't find the motivation to do another trimming session. So it's a little bit overgrown, but that's okay. Uh, the fish are doing fine. We're gonna take them out, move them to a different tank, and then we're gonna take everything out, clean it, and start completely from scratch. So first step is to remove all the plants. After that, I'm gonna to try to carefully remove the hardscape and then catch some of the fish. And I think there's a ton of red cherry shrimp in there as well. So that's gonna be fun catching those. Now this plant over here, the Myriophyllum Guiana, has a very strong root system. So if I would just rip that out, I would get a huge like dust cloud, you know? So it's best to just leave the roots in, kind of just Cut it all out. There's some beautiful clumps of Boes of Landeren in there as well. They were completely hidden by the uh, by the moss. Beautiful. Got some really nice Anubias as well. Okay, I was thinking of removing the hardscape first, but then I remember that I glued everything together, so it's probably gonna be quite difficult. So let's see if we can catch the fish and the shrimp first. I might have to lower the water level a bit more, but yeah, we'll see. Look at this, there's literally hundreds of them. So I'm not gonna take a net, I'm actually gonna take a large like kitchen spoon and just take them out. So I've managed to catch all the fish in the shrimp and I've slowly been acclimating them for their new or their temporary homes, haven't really decided yet. But over here on the left, we have all of the red cherry shrimp. In the center, we have all the chili boras and the one orange neon Sky Rainbow and then on the left we have the three um, dwarf pea puffers. So I think the cherry shrimp will be a great addition to the black lava rock aquascape because it's very green in here so the red cherry shrimp will definitely stand out. <laughs> There's so many of them it's crazy. Look at the amount of cherry shrimp just in this little corner here <laughs> that's absolutely insane. And then I'm going to add the chili rasborans in here as well. I think these will just be in here temporarily and maybe once the, uh, the vase is cycled we can add them back and then i think the pea puffers will actually be a really good addition for the africa aquarium technically they're not from africa but in africa you do have a lot of different types of puffers so i think they will actually be a good addition for this aquarium and in the meantime i've also finished cleaning the vase i was a little bit afraid there would be some scratches on the glass but i don't see any so that's good so we're all ready to get started on our new layout now the first thing I want to do is actually change the light. So at the moment we still have the Dell uh, Trocol LED. There's nothing really wrong with this light, but it just has an on and off. I want something with a little bit more controllability. Okay, light upgrade done. We now have the Chihiro C2 RGB. Big fan of Chihiro's lights. I just really love the apps. You can adjust the intensity, make schedules, change the colors, have a slow ramp up, slow ramp down. Really nice. And I also like the, uh, the arm, the swivel. Just makes things a lot easier, you know? So I mentioned earlier that I already had an idea for the layout. Now this stuff right here is called Talawa wood. And here in the Netherlands, you can find this in literally every single aquarium store. Like it's quite popular, it's quite readily available, but I've actually never made a layer with it before. Today that's going to change. The idea that I have is to basically make sort of like a mangrove forest. Like these branches, these twigs kind of reminds me of mangroves. Now mangroves are salt water or brackish water, so technically it doesn't really work, but we're going to make a freshwater mangrove forest. Not sure if that's a thing, but we're gonna make it a thing. 
And before I can get started with the lava wood, we need to make our substrate layer. And I think the substrate for this vase is going to be quite interesting. I think I have like five different products to use. I have crushed lava rock, I have aqua soil, I have sand, I have gravel and I have pebbles. Yeah, let's just uh, get started. So the first two subset layers are in and we have quite the slope towards the back. I think it's almost 20 centimeters high in the back. So to make sure that the slope stays that way, I want to make some so-called substrate supports. So I got an old uh, tissue culture cup. I'm just going to cut this into like little strips. So little tiny strips. I'm just going to push them in the substrate. So that's just one strip in there. I'm going to do a few more and hopefully that way the sole will not start rolling forward. So that's the substrate almost done. We have the crushed lava rock, we have the aqua salt, the pebbles and the gravel. So we just need the sand. I'm gonna wait with that. I'm gonna add in the sand after we're completely done. So with the harsh cake, with the planting, because if we add in the sand now, later on it's just gonna, gonna become a mess. So the next step is to add in the wood. And then you guys are gonna kind of see my vision for this layout. This is kind of what I have in mind. It's not quite there yet, but it's just a first try. So we have thicker pieces of tlama in front and then smaller pieces in the back. And that really helps to create a sense of depth. Um, I just need to uh, play around with it a little bit more, but it's kind of the first impression. So that's the wood structure done. Really happy with that. I think it looks good. I think the next step is to actually fill the vase up with water. Because it's round, once you add in water, it sort of starts to have this magnifying effect. It's very weird, but I'm very curious to see how the hardscape looks once we add in the water. Okay, so this is quite interesting. So these small branches all the way in the back, they definitely look thicker now, but they still seem a bit far away. So it seems like we haven't lost that sense of depth. Really happy with that. So I think the next step is actually planting. So now that we are done with the planting, we can add in the sand. I decided to go with El Dorado sand from Wio. Since the pebbles are quite bright, I thought a darker sand might look nice. I did rinse it a few times before adding it into the vase. The final step is to add a background. As always, I'm using this cheap self-adhesive glass foil that you can find in any hardware store, but I'll leave some Amazon links in the video description as well. So a few days have passed, the phase is done, it's looking good, really happy with it, it actually turned out way better than I thought. 
So I've added some floating plants as well. And I've also added some moss to the top of the branches. Now my initial plan was to keep this a no filter setup, just like the previous layout. But after I was done, I kind of felt like this setup would really benefit from some moving water. We just look a lot better with moving water, you know? Yeah, so I kind of last minute decided to put a filter on this tank. The filter is actually behind the vase. Over there is a small Oase Filter Smart 60. So really small external canister filter. Now I took that little filter from one of my other nano tanks. That tank has already been up and running for a while. Uh, so this filter is already cycled, full of beneficial bacteria which means that we don't necessarily have to cycle the vase and we can actually add in the fish right away. So that is exactly what we're going to do. In this little container over here, we have the Eurus boars that you guys saw at the beginning of this video. And next to that, we have really dark new Caradina shrimp. They're almost black. So let's start with the shrimp first. I recently got these from a friend and he said that they are called uh, jade green new Caradinas. But uh, yeah, they, they look almost black. Yeah, I think these are the perfect choice for this. I didn't want to go with the red cherry shrimp again because we have this very orange brownish sand. So I thought the red cherry shrimp wouldn't stand out as much. I think right now we have a nice contrast with this really dark shrimp. Okay, moving on to the fish. So we actually have a, a mix of different dwarf rasboras. We got the chili rasboras, we got the phoenix rasboras, and then there's also one uh, blue neon rasbora. This is a nice little group. Of course, they're a little bit pale right now. I'll take some more clips later on when they're more colored up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the making of the mangrove forest in the XXL vase. If you did enjoy it, then please do smash that like button. It helps me out more than you know. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Take care.